change your plan. It's going to be minus 6y, not plus as in the introduction. So part one then. Solving this third order on your differential equation by the normal technique. Find the auxiliary equation just by using m, which of course would be the coefficient of that x in the exponential terms. m cubed minus 7, just m minus 6 equals 0 for the homogeneous part. Now, factorising this cubic expression here, I'm going to use synthetic division, whereby I put down the coefficients of this cubic, which is 1 for the cube term, 0 for the squared term, negative 7 for the linear one, and a negative 6 at the end for the constant. And first of all, find any root that works, and I know one root that works here. Negative 1 would give a negative 1, and a plus 7 and a negative 6, which would give 0, so that's a root. So if I feed negative 1 through this synthetic table, which of course works both ways, it'll either carry out the evaluation, which I suppose is what it's actually designed for. It will evaluate the expression at negative 1, but it also gives the quotient in these numbers here upon division by the factor, which produces that root. So bring the 1 down, multiply it up, negative 1, add it down, multiply it up 1, add it down, multiply it up 6, and there's the 0. Which means that on dividing by the factor which produces that root, m plus 1, the quotient is, with those three terms, m squared minus, oops, minus m minus 6 equals 0, and then factorise that trivial little quadratic there. The m, m, 2, 3, the negative will go to the 3, so that must be plus, giving the values for m of negative 1, negative 2, and 3. So that, the complementary function, which I'll just call y1, would be any linear combination of these three solutions, that is e to the negative x, e to the negative 2x, and e to the 3x. Part 2 to find a particular integral. Well, if you take, call it y2, to produce an x squared through various derivatives, then I can only have terms, polynomial terms of that nature, so I'll go for a plus bx plus cx squared differentiate it sufficiently, so I'll have to go to the third derivative. So the first derivative would be b plus 2cx. The next derivative would be 2c, and luckily the third derivative is just 0. So feed that back into this equation, and I've got just one lot of the third derivative, so that's a 0. Seven lots of the first derivative, b plus 2cx, minus six lots of the first, of the actual value, a plus bx plus cx squared all should equal x squared. I'll we'll just separate them into the three types of terms to equate corresponding terms. So the constant term would be negative 7b minus 6a. But of course there's none of them. The term in x would be negative 14c minus 6b. And of course, there's none of them. And the term in x squared is just negative 6c to equal x squared. So, equating terms would give me then the x squared terms means negative 6c should equal 1, which means c equals negative a sixth. Now, step back into the next term. Equating the x terms, this should come to 0, but I know the value of c. It's negative 1 upon 6, so multiplying that gives me 40 upon, 14 upon 6, which is 7 upon 3. So 7 upon 3 minus 6b should equal 0. Well, that means that the b should equal that divided by 6 will be 7 over 18. And then stepping back to the constant term, negative 7 of those, so that's negative 49 upon 18, minus 6 lots of a should again equal 0, constant terms on both sides, which means a should equal, dividing by 6, 
negative 49 over, six times the bottom there, the denominator, which is 108. So my particular integral will be, make sure you put these coefficients in the right place, will be negative 49 over 108, a little bit nasty, plus 7 eighteenths of x, and minus 1 sixth of x squared. Clear away the clabber, and you have the general solution as y equals, any order you like, a e to the negative x, b e to the negative 2x, c e to the 3x, or if you wish, call them c1, c2, c3, I might do that later, minus 49 upon 108, plus 7 eighteenths of x, minus 1 sixth of x squared. Now, this is one of the results that we're going to end up with when we go through the rest of the videos, the first of them being to take this third order equation and split it into three first order equations to start off the linear algebra, which will then roll through, and yes, it will roll through very tediously to produce this as the first of its set of solutions. And no, the purpose of this isn't to say, oh, this linear algebra route is going to be so long, why do you bother with it when this is so easy? This will only be so easy in this particular case, because this will produce a very simple set of three first order equations. In general, a set of three first order equations would be much more cumbersome to deal with to try and produce these higher order equations to solve. So, the next video, number two then, in the set would be, take this equation and split it into three first order ordinary differential equations to form a matrix equation to kick the ball rolling.